Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail General Leonard Wood. Our story is entitled, Dr. Soldier, Indian Chief. The story of the pioneer spirit of our United States Army in the westward march of civilization. The story of a great American general. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Now more than ever before, Men with above-average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the U.S. Army. Why not investigate an Army enlistment for yourself today and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Dr. Soldier, Indian Chief. <laughs> Soldier, statesman, doctor, he was all of these. But to such titles, so much more must be added to give you a clear picture of the American patriot General Leonard Wood. The life of Leonard Wood was painted in the bold, bright colors of action. Its lines are strong, its movements eventful and outstanding. For in all things, from the field of battle to the field of administration, Leonard Wood was a man of great courage, of remarkable vision, and of deep understanding. There are many episodes, all equally exciting, that we might choose from his career to portray for you here. But we have chosen those which deal with the earlier part of his life. For out of these experiences was molded the notable, unflinching characteristics that made Leonard Wood the great man he was. Boston City Hospital, 1884. Ah, get up, Pam! Get up! Please, help hey. driver. He's hurt so bad. Well, we're almost there, ma'am. Get up, Pam! Timmy! Oh, Timmy's big Now, just me. leave him lie still, ma'am. The doctor will know what to do. Hey, hey, here we come. Hop, oh, hey! Hey, orderly, orderly. Oh, uh, Dr. Wood, we uh, got a boy here hurt bad. All right, there's no need to shout. You may drive an ambulance, but you don't have to sound like one. Grab the other end of that stretcher and help me in with him. Yes. Oh, oh, oh doctor, please, please. Yes, I know, I know, madam. Now try to contain yourself. Your boy is going to be all right. If the boy's going to live, he's got to have an immediate operation. I can see that, Len. But I also know it's against the rules for an intern to perform an operation. We've got to get Dr. Duncan. Oh, use your head, Ralph. By the time we get him, there wouldn't be any need to operate. You're the intern on duty. It's your responsibility. That's right. And I'll take it. I'm going to operate. And say goodbye to your career. Well, right now I'm more interested in saving that boy's life. Nurse, prepare the boy for surgery. What have you got to say for yourself, sir? If I hadn't operated, the child would be dead, Dr. Duncan. No one else was on hand, therefore I assumed responsibility. Indeed. And pray tell, what great gift enabled you to know that an immediate operation was needed to save the child? It was obvious, sir. It's there in my report. It's not obvious to me. What is obvious is that you assumed authority to which you had no right, and that you broke a cardinal rule of this hospital. I'm preferring charges against you, sir. It's a pity, Doctor, that you're not as good a physician as you are an autocrat. Well, how dare you? How dare you? Why, I... I'm... Good day, sir. At least I'll leave, knowing that I've saved the life of the child. Oh, 
I'm awfully sorry, Len. Yes, I know you are, Ralph. I think if you'd been in charge at the time, you'd have done just as I did. I don't know. I just don't know. What are you going to do now? I've taken a small office in Stamford Street. Stamp? Well, mm. that's the roughest neighborhood in the city. Well, they also need a doctor there. You can't live on what those people will pay you. Oh, I've also taken a tutoring job. I'll make out until I hear. Until you hear what? How I did on the examination. What examination? Oh, didn't I tell you? No, you turkey buzzard. You didn't tell me. <laughs> well, I must have been too busy packing. There were some openings for assistant surgeon in the army. I took a crack at it. The army? Mm -hmm. What do you want to go in the army for? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'm just a frustrated soldier at heart, Ralph. Always wanted to get in the service. This was the opportunity. I hope I make it. Well, I'll be. Well, then, one thing's for sure. Whether you become a soldier or a surgeon or both, my nickel's on you all the way. You have been accepted as assistant surgeon in the United States Army with the rank of first lieutenant. As to your request for active duty, you are to proceed at once to Fort Huachuca, Arizona. Upon arrival, you will report. Oh. At ease, Sergeant, at ease. I'm Lieutenant Wood. I was ordered to report to General Crook. Is he in? Uh, he is that, sir, but he and Captain Lawton are having a bit of a powwow, so I'm afraid you'll have to be waiting to pay your respects. I see. Well, I'll just sit down here if you don't mind and wait. Well, I don't mind at all, sir, but uh, well, begging your pardon, I don't think you'll get to see the general tonight, what with Captain Lawton moving out of dawn. Moving out for where, Sergeant? Where, sir? Why, against Geronimo. The Apache chief? Well, I never heard of any other. Faith, Captain's got the devil's own job ahead of him. For six months, he and the general have been making plans, but if you was to ask me, they could make up for six years. Uh, uh, Captain Lawton leaves at dawn, you said? That's right, sir. So why not come back and see the general in the morning? Well, you get on with your work, Sergeant. I'll just sit here and uh, cool my heels. Make sure that every man has adequate... Yes, what is it? Captain Lawton, I'm Lieutenant Wood, assistant surgeon. I arrived just... Pleased to... to meet you, Lieutenant, but as you can see... Yes, I can I... see you're very busy getting ready to leave at dawn, and uh, I'd like to leave with you. Leave with me? I don't recall your being assigned to my command. I haven't been, sir. I'm volunteering to go. You'll need a doctor along. Volunteering? How long you served out here, Lieutenant? I just arrived this evening. How long you been in the Army? Since April. Ever marched 50 miles in a day under a blazing desert sun? No, sir, but that doesn't mean I can't. You need a doctor for this expedition. Uh, General Crook said if it's all right with you, it's all right with him. Hmm. Sergeant Kelly! Uh, yes, sir? Sergeant Kelly, how long have you been in this man's army? Me, sir? Faith, it must be close to 20 years, Captain. I ain't so good at figures. He means that if anyone took the trouble to find out how long he's been in, they'd retire him. Are you pulling my leg, sir? No, Kelly. I want you to tell Lieutenant Wood about the detail. He just arrived. Oh, I know that, sir. I've had the pleasure. Well, now, I'll tell you. Going out after Geronimo is like trying to round up the devil and all his henchmen. Run and hit. Run and hit. That's the way he fights. You keep coming after him, but you never find him. And if he ain't bad enough to fight, there's the desert. You know how I look at it, sir? Like the desert was Hades and Geronimo Satan, and we stumbling around trying to catch him in his own backyard. Very well put, Sergeant. Thank you. Get on with your loading. Right, sir. Of course, he wouldn't miss this detail for a minute. Well, there you have it from the voice of experience. Well, I'd rather learn it the hard way myself. Why? Oh, partly curiosity, I guess. Partly the desire to gain experience in the line. Partly the desire to take a hand in something important. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I just want to go, that's all. Hmm. Well, it's true we need a doctor. It's true we haven't got one. Sergeant Kelly. Yes, sir. We have any extra mounts? We only tiger, sir. Tiger, Lieutenant Wood. He's a mean, vicious, unbroken bronco. How much riding you done? Uh, well, I'm afraid uh, I haven't done a great deal. Any? Uh, no, sir. Never had time. Still want to go? Naturally. 
I'll ask you again, after you've had a round with Tiger. You'll take me? If you don't break your fool neck on that horse. You got a busy night ahead of you, Lieutenant. Sergeant Kelly! Hot enough for you, sir? Yes, hot enough. You and Tiger seem to be getting on. Pay it if you don't. <laughs> well, at least he doesn't try to throw me every other step. A bit sore, sir? Well, eight falls and six days in the saddle, yes. I'm a bit sore, Sergeant. <laughs> oh, uh, tell me, Sergeant. Uh, Geronimo is pretty bad medicine, isn't he? Well, he is that, sir. Over 800 men, women, and children he's killed in this territory. Rags, I haven't killed nearly a hundred himself. He knows where he's going to strike next. He takes no prisoners, I understand. Only for torture. Pity the poor soul that falls in his hands. Nathan, I do. Ah, one month. We've covered more than 500 miles. And no sign of Geronimo. That'll come in time. We've garrisoned every water hole along the border. That's the first step. Now that it's done, we can move out against him. Here, what's this? A uh, sick list. Twelve men down with heat exhaustion. Hmm. The desert is as much a foe as Geronimo. I recommend that these three men be relieved. Sent back to Huachuca. They can't continue. All right. I'll write out an order for replacements. We lost poor horses today, too. Yes, I know. Glenn, <laughs> for a greenhorn, you're pretty tough. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, whoa! Whoa, Glenn! Woo, woo. <clears throat> Captain, we struck Peter, spotted a big party of them. They're moving up the rainbow. Good work, Baldy. They spot you. Me, Captain? I don't rightly reckon. All right. We may be able to trap him. You know the country up over Loco Range? Yeah, there ain't no country for a horse nor a mule. We'll go on foot with 50 men. I'll press on up the rainbow with the main body. You can get across that range in four days, and I can keep them following the valley. We'll be able to box them in. What? Four days to cross them mountains in this weather? Oh, we ain't mountain goats, Captain. You're not in the army, Baldy. I can't order you to go. But I am asking you to. No need to shame me, Captain. Uh, what officer are you going to make head of this chivalry? Which one would you recommend? Wood. He's made of iron. Agreed. Sergeant Kelly, have the bugler sound assembly. Lieutenant, we got to call a halt. We call a halt, Baldy. We won't make it. Lieutenant, men's shoes have fallen apart. You can't go over these cliffs barefoot. Who can't, Sergeant? Keep moving there. You want to freeze to death? Make one day freeze the next. Go barefoot up a mountain. It ain't in the life. Baldy, how soon will we start down? If the men can keep going, another two hours. All right. You're leading us. Move out. Sergeant, you yes, deploy the men along the ridge line on each side and across the gorge. Yes, sir. Lee, take your squad over there. Timmons and Jones down there, up right along here. Now get to it. Hey. hey. What's the matter, Baldy? Look there. See the dust? Apaches. We made it in time. Oh, that's cavalry. Huh? They done give us the slip. Put our feet all up crossing them mountains for nothing. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Doctor, Soldier, and Indian Chief. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Among the proudest men in uniform today are the soldiers of the Army's Airborne Service. Right now, the Army is accepting applications for direct assignment to the Airborne from men who voluntarily enlist. It's an opportunity to associate with a top-notch group of men in an outfit that's second to none. Young men, 
If you'd like to find out more about qualifying for the Airborne, why don't you visit your local Army and Air Force recruiting station? The recruiting sergeant will give you full information. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Dr. Soldier, Indian Chief. In speaking of the Geronimo campaign, Theodore Roosevelt said, no one who has not lived in the West can appreciate the incredible and extraordinary fatigue and hardship attendant upon this campaign. What fighting there was, was of an exceedingly dangerous type, and the severity of the marches through the waterless mountains of Arizona, New Mexico, and the northern regions of Old Mexico, where the Apache bands finally retreated, was such that only men of iron could stand them. Sometimes the pursuit led over mountain ranges 10,000 feet high, and sometimes across the Mojave Desert, the hottest and most desolate piece of land in this hemisphere. As month after month ground by under the weary feet of the soldiers, it began to seem that Geronimo and his warriors were gifted with supernatural powers. Men burned themselves out, and many actually died of exhaustion. Constant replacements of men and horses were needed. It was eight months after the campaign had started that... Baldy said you wanted to see me, Henry. Yeah. Have a cup of this. Isn't much good, but it's hot. Oh, thanks. Len, you think this campaign's been a failure? Well, we haven't accomplished what we set out to do, but it isn't over yet. A lot of people would like to have us call quits. Not the right people. No, not as yet. You realize, Len, we've been on the trail eight months? Well, time goes pretty fast. You know, except for myself, you're the only other officer left out of the original group. Three dead. The others replaced. Yes, I know. I know, Henry. How would you like to take charge of the infantry? He's second in command to me. I'd like it fine. I need bucking up. Someone to look up to. That's you. Thanks. You'll also have charge of the scouts. Oh, <laughs> Baldy will like that. <laughs> that old reprobate. And you'll have Kelly, too. Good. Any orders? Yes. Get some sleep. A year passes. A system of relays is developed in which it's possible for worn-out men to be quickly relieved by fresher units. Lawton and Wood act as the coordinators. They work incessantly, never leave the field of action. Wood is bitten by a tarantula, continues to march on foot for two days before he goes berserk and his men have to restrain him from running out into the mountains. He recovers and goes on. The Apaches retreat, circle back, strike here at a rail hub, there at a lonely ranch, watching every chance to cut off messengers, patrols, stragglers. Lawton's forces constantly follow up, constantly seek a decisive engagement, always on the alert for an ambush. Save your ammunition unless you have something to shoot at besides rocks. Can't be more than a handful of them. Yeah, just enough to hold us up or sucker us in. Kelly... Dispatch a scout to Captain Lawton. Right. Tell him to come fast. He may be on to something. Yes, sir. Baldy, take Lee's squad. See if you can move in behind them. Yeah. Keep down there! Gone? Slipped away in the night. Big party, maybe 200. Trail's clear. No place for him to hide out there in that desert. Sooner we move out, sooner we'll catch up. <laughs> Never say die. It's a waste of time. Kelly! It's them, all right. No way of hiding that dust. Come night, they'll split into 50 different parties. And that'll be the end of that. Why wait till night? Why haven't they done it already? Why did they do it last night? Must be a whole village. I knew the women and the young uns couldn't make it alone. Right. They'll have to stick together until they reach the mountain. They got too much of a start on us, Captain. I'll never catch them. Covered 25 miles already. Night's coming on. Sergeant, halt the column. Starbucks troops should be right about here. If he knew the picture, he could move in behind them. Right, but I can't order a man to ride 30, 40 miles across that desert with Geronimo scouts watching every trail. You don't have to order anyone. I'll take the message. No, Len. Wasn't 25 miles on foot today enough for you? I'll start as soon as it gets dark. 
Tiger can use the exercise. In the last week, we've lost three dispatch riders. <laughs> and you can't lose me, Henry. Across 35 miles of Indian-infested desert land he rode, there was no cover, only the darkness to hide him. He reached his destination at 2 in the morning, delivered his message, and left immediately. Just after sunup, he rode into camp, and without any chance for rest, took over his command and marched on foot another 30 miles, and all for nothing. For once more, the wily Apache slipped away, leaving only the empty vastness of the desert to mock those who followed. Up here, easy like. Yeah, don't make a sound. Now, look down there. Geronimo's camp. Must be. Must have called a powwow. Whole shooting match down there. Well, it's almost too much to believe. After 18 months. Well, we ain't got him yet. In fact, we still have to get out of here. Moon will set in another hour. We better not move until then. I hate to waste a minute. They may break camp in the morning. Couldn't get back to Lawton before then unless we had wings. The sooner we get to him, the sooner we'll get back here. Uh, I never knew such a man in an all-fired rush. You want to lose your pretty yellow hair to save a little time? We got in here. Now that ain't getting out. Well, stay and wait, then. I'm on my way. You are the stubbornest Keep most... Keep your voice down. You ready? If I get my scalp took for this, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> Well, we made a hundred forced marches like this, only to find the trap empty. Maybe this time we'll have better luck. First time we've ever had a chance to grab them all together. Spread out along the Yaqui, huh? Couldn't be better. Hey, take that end of the map, will you? All right, this is the way we move in. Lieutenant Brown? Sergeant Kelly, bring up the men one squad at a time, every man on his belly. The utmost silence is imperative. He ain't got much time. Near sunup. Brown and his cavalry will hit them from over there. We'll have to move down the cliffs. I wonder they ain't spotted us. It ain't like them. Hurry them up, Sergeant. Peace, Captain. I'm bringing them in quick. <coughs> oh, they've discovered us. Bugler, sound the charge. <laughs> As skirmishers, forward! On the double! Well, well, it wasn't a complete surprise. Most of their braves got away, but we took their horses, their guns, all their equipment. Women and children? None of them hurt. Without horses, without guns, it ought to be a matter of time. Yes, I know. Well, it don't sound so sad. Well, it is sad. There's no finer than Geronimo. No better soldiers on foot or on horseback than the Apaches. And no greater menace to the settling of the Southwest. Yes. Any orders? Yes. Sit down and have a cup. What are you grinning about, you bald-headed old lizard? Oh, you thick-headed Irishman, ain't you heard? Geronimo and his whole tribe will give up. Now, you don't say. Oh, now, you don't say. What you got, a bellyache? A uh, faith, I'm at that. Ain't you heard the whole Mexican army's on its way up here? They say Geronimo's their prisoner because we were after taking them in their country. Well, now, don't that beat all. What's the boss man say? I ain't asked him and he ain't told me. Yeah. Well, if it was me, I'd horse leather and get back on our own side of the fence. There's no point in Hank. Take your five best men and report to Lieutenant Gatewood. We move out at once. Yes, sir. We'll be in charge of the prisoners. Balding, I want you to lead us over the border by the shortest possible route. What's the play? The main body will remain here and stall the Mexicans. We're to get Geronimo and his tribe into United States territory fast as we can. Ten of us, hey, to watch that pack of wolves? Ten's plenty if we're careful. Ain't nobody can be that careful. I tell you, they're getting ready to make a break. That dancing is just to get them stirred up. Sure, we'll shoot some of them, but a lot of them can get away in this country. And there's only one thing to do. Change their minds. Yeah, you go down there now and try to talk to them, and they'll kill you sore. When they get riled up, they don't think straight. Lieutenant Gatewood, take four men and cover me from over there. Sergeant, you and the rest hold right here. 
To make a move against me, start shooting. Ah, you're plum loco. <laughs> Cover me from behind. Wish me luck. Listen to me, warriors without arms. I know your thoughts as the desert knows the sun. You would escape, but you know in your hearts there is no escape now. You have come to the end of the war trail. If you try to run from me, many of you will die, and the women and children of your lodges will go hungry. And those of you who might flee into the hills will be hunted down by the Mexican soldiers who will not show you the mercy of the great white father. Think well, brave warriors, before you throw away your lives. I have spoken. Of Assistant Surgeon Leonard Wood, his superior wrote in dispatches to the commanding general that more than any one man in the entire campaign, he was responsible for its success. He was made captain and full surgeon. Ten years later, as a colonel in charge of the 1st New York Volunteer Cavalry, he organized the famous Rough Riders and led them to victory up San Juan Hill. Appointed military governor of Cuba with the rank of brigadier general, he shortly became its first civilian governor. He waged a different kind of battle there, one against filth and yellow fever. His old friend Teddy Roosevelt made him military commander in the Philippines when things were too hot out there for anyone else to handle. Leonard Wood eased the tense situation and brought peace and a new way of life to the natives. In all the things he did during his eventful career, Leonard Wood was a man of great courage, incredible stamina, and with a profound love for his country. In all undertakings, he was never afraid to volunteer. Proudly, we hail General Leonard Wood. Remember the stir made in 1946 when we contacted the moon by radar? That was the work of your United States Army. Your Army needs radio repairmen, radar maintenance men, telephone technicians, message clerks, photographers, a whole host of skilled men in the fields of communications and electronics. If you have the skill and want to put it to the best use in serving your country, get on the beam and join the Army team. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>